all of us are human beings, and we all have our beliefs and biases, and that's true for science, it's true for theology, it's true for philosophy. Um, I mean, I guess one of the things for us to always keep in mind is that as objective as somebody may think anything is, um, or however real or true or, uh, or absolute anybody thinks anything is, uh, we are very limited in our abilities to look at the world uh, as human beings, as, as wonderful as our brain is. It only takes in a very small percentage of the information that's out there. So whenever we apply ourselves to some part of the world, uh, one of the problems that we have is that our brain tends to tell us that we've got the whole picture and doesn't bother to tell us when it's filling in information, when it's lying to us, when it's being inaccurate. And therefore, when we think that we understand the whole world and, and we understand the world accurately, and whether that's scientifically, politically, philosophically, spiritually, whatever, um, I, I, one of the things that I've tried to advocate is that on one hand, you can't escape that bias and that belief, but hopefully, if we can show why people do have those beliefs and biases, we can at least be made more aware of them. And uh, and it goes back a little bit to what we were looking at with the obsessive compulsive disorder. Does it? Their their obsessive compulsive thoughts don't necessarily go away, but they are more aware of what they are. And I think to some degree, um, even all of our beliefs and biases, it's almost impossible for them to go away. But if we can become more mindful, we, if we can become more aware of what they are then at least we will be more accepting and more compassionate perhaps about everybody else's beliefs. And I think that that's an important place for us to, that, that in and of itself I think would be an important paradigm shift that perhaps we, we all could uh, have some benefit from.